You're tuned in to The Keetra Show and listening to SOB, Style of Business, the podcast with your host, Keetra. We aim to highlight the ongoing trek of entrepreneurs and business owners from around the globe, featuring stories that recount their struggles, experiences, and inevitable road to success and self-fulfillment. Welcome to SOB. This podcast is being brought to you by my inspiring new book titled Courage is a Muscle, Using Heart to Power Your Entrepreneurial Dreams. You can grab your copy today on Amazon. Hey, what's up, y'all? Thanks so much for tuning in and checking out another wonderful episode of SOB Style of Business Podcast. This is your host, Keetra. And this week, I'm back with another good guest, another wonderful guest. We're talking to the fantastic Gresh Harkless. And Gresh has a lot of wonderful things going on, as all of the guests do. But this is a very exciting show because he is the founder of CEO Blog Nation, also known as CB Nation. This guy is hosting two podcasts, which is C- which are CEO Chat, and he is also the host of I Am CEO. And on top of all of that madness, he's also the founder of Blue 16 Media, in which he helps small businesses and entrepreneurs develop visibility in digital marketing campaigns online. So today we're talking about CB Nation, of course, in addition to the digital marketing, entrepreneurship, all of that wonderful stuff. He's sharing some uh, tips, resources, and just, you know, some things that have helped small business owners to really, really, really create and establish that longevity that we need, especially in today's climate. So, all right, without further ado, let me allow Gresh to drop that introduction and we will roll this thing forward. Gresh, what's up? How you doing? Thanks so much for agreeing to be on the show. What's going on, Keisha? I appreciate you for having me on the show. Yeah, yeah. I, you know what? We got a lot to discuss. I have dropped all the the goods in the intro, so hey, did, you know, people want to know what all we, what what all do we have to offer today? I I'm so excited to be talking about what you're doing, not only with your digital marketing company, but especially with CEO Blog Nation because that's like a one of the top you know entrepreneur hub, hubs, and it's so much information that a lot of people can really glean and uh, use. So before we get into that, let me allow you a moment if you want to just kind of give us a little background and introduction and then we can kind of continue forward. Yeah, I definitely appreciate that again, creature. Like, as you said, it's madness doing so many different things and have, you know, my hands in in a lot of different pots, so to speak. But um, what I always usually talk about is that uh, for me, I've always felt like I had like entrepreneurial tendencies before I even knew what that was. So a lot of what I did really started from me just interviewing entrepreneurs and business owners. So um, I, when I was like 10 years old, had this family newspaper. My dad was in the military. He went to an entirely different country for an entire year. It was a super, you know, difficult time. Um, I was frustrated. Um, But when I was a kid, I started to do this family newspaper. So I would um, basically get on Microsoft Word and, and get some clip art. And I would talk about all the things that were going on in our family. Oh, wow. So what I did was took those um, monthly newspapers and we would put them in a care box and send it to my dad. So we send, you know, honey buns and all his favorite snacks and treats, but I would also put in my family newspapers. And it was kind of that, that laid kind of like the seed of that entrepreneurial journey, because I also took the, the, the um, newspaper and I also would sell the subscriptions uh, to, to my family members and, and close friends of the family too. So the reason I usually always bring that up is because a lot of times I feel like um, we kind of have an idea of like what our gift is or what our thing is that kind of makes us unique. And that was one of the stories I went back to. So fast forward a lot of years, um, I graduated during the economic crisis. I got laid off from a job. I was going to get laid off from another job. Um, but luckily it was an outside sales job. So that's when I um, was kind of dabbling in other things. Um, I'd always been kind of a techie and interested in technology and computers and, and even, you know, built a, a business, a website, you know, for my for my mom. Um, but I, it really was that story that I came back to. So that's really what laid the foundation for, for CB nation and CEO blog nation is I used to do freelance writing. Um, I couldn't do it because I had tore my Achilles tendon. So I was stuck Mm -hmm. in bed doing everything on the computer. And that's really what laid that foundation for me, like even fully understanding or getting an idea of like what a, being a business owner or a CEO or an entrepreneur even was. Yeah. And that even laid the foundation to the digital marketing that I did. But it definitely was as uh, topsy-turvy and all around as it sounds because, you know, I I try to just go back to that story. And this is kind of like what makes me me. And it led me to to what I'm doing today. 
Wow. Yeah. And I like I I was like not one podcast, but two. Like I know already the capacity and the magnitude of what you go in and you get, you know, you, you pull these stories from all these wonderful people and just getting the insight of their journeys. So I know it takes work, you know, and I know it takes a lot of time. Um, let's, let's talk about like your own entrepreneurial journey. So you, you started young, of course, you know, with the family newspaper, just kind of not even knowing what it was, but you just wanted to create something. Um, and so when you, you did the newspaper, you know, you go off to school and all that good stuff. Like, did you ever think about, a specific type of career that you wanted to, uh, I'm sorry, not a career, but a, sip, a specific type of job or maybe some sort of uh, product or tool or resource that you wanted to create. What I'm trying to get at is like, why CB Nation? You know, so, so you get started mm-hmm. on your entrepreneurial journey. You start kind of seeing what works, what doesn't, like what led you to actually create CB Nation? Yeah, for me, it was already, you know, something that I went back to about me loving to write and and, and create Um, what has now become content. But honestly, at that time, it was just me writing. But I kind of thought I wanted to start a business, but I don't think I fully understood what that was. So, you know, throughout school, you know, I was an English major. So I was going to go to law school. I I came in undecided. And then I was like, okay, I'm I'm going to pick pick English because I would love to to write. Um, So then maybe I'll go to law school or maybe I'll teach. And I have my master's in sports industry management. So I was like, okay, well, maybe I'll go, you know, work for a, you know, sports team or do something along those lines because I'm also passionate about sports. So um, to answer your question, um, I don't think it ever became clear. Like this is like when I was 10, I wasn't thinking about CB Nation. But what I wanted to do was trying to get back to like that kind of childlike curiosity of just trying things um, because you're interested in it. And a lot of times when I started to read um, about people that were successful, it was because they were often passionate about what it is that they did. And sometimes as we're seeing now in this world, um, what was yesterday is not necessarily what's going to be next year or tomorrow. So what I try to do is say, hey, these are things that I'm interested in. I'm not sure exactly how it's going to to manifest itself or what it's going to look like, but I'm going to do the things that I'm passionate about. And hopefully these things will kind of, you know, come to fruition. So I've always said I looked at myself as like a journalist um, and I knew when I was in school that that industry was completely being, you know, transformed. Um, So I wanted to still, you know, love the writing and love kind of like that journalistic mindset. But for me, you know, trying to understand what even being a business owner was or being an entrepreneur was, I didn't really know. And I didn't really have that environment around me to really know like, okay, this is the things you're supposed to do to build a business. So I said, okay, well, I like writing. I like creating content. So let me go interview some people, find out what advice they would have for business owners that people are trying to start businesses, what mistakes they feel like they made, you know, when they started their business. And that's kind of like what laid the seeds for, you know, even what I'm doing now is because it's always that curiosity. And I just took something that I was passionate about and just try to merge those two things together. Yeah, no. And you're, you're doing an excellent job. And as far as the writing, like, I'm curious to know, like, was there a specific topic that you were interested in when you were, you know, more going along the the journalism angle? Like, did you find yourself kind of, you know, working toward writing on uh, business-based or entrepreneurial-based articles, or was it, you know, sports or... Yeah. So I did, a uh, when I, when I did freelance writing, so I tried to do, um, you know, the freelance writing in between there, I started a bunch of things. One of them I, I did was freelance writing and I usually tried to write about, um, sports. So I covered a lot of, I'm in the, the Washington DC area. So there's like local, um, sports teams and not even sports teams. I should say like high school sports that I used to cover and do things like that. Yeah. Um, but I was always kind of interested in entrepreneurship and I, I feel like there's kind of like this, I don't know if I want to say underdog mentality, but I saw that there wasn't, I felt a great um, amount of of information that was written about some of the local businesses or some of the local, you know, entrepreneurs, whether that be small to medium sized businesses. Um, and these were the people like, especially during 2008, 2009, that were really um, creating the jobs that basically would help to feed the families of the the families I saw around, you know, me and, and around all across the world. So I wanted to do my part to really like showcase these entrepreneurs and business owners that were doing really great things and their stories of why they got started, 
um, of, you know, some of the ideas that they have. And sometimes they had experiences where they were laid off. So they had to feed their family. So they decided to just start a business because they were thinking about doing it, but decided to, because life, you know, went that way. And I think yeah. those are the stories that were super inspira- inspirational for me. And I think there's not enough of those stories to me that are being told. So I try to do my part to make that happen. Yeah, no. And I, I love what you're doing, especially you know, like you were talking about with CB Nation, not only the podcast, but just that online resource, you know, the magnitude of the information that you're sharing and like the resources, the hacks, you know, you got a lot of great information there. Um, Now, tell me a little bit about how you were able to kind of parlay that into launching that second podcast, because I know you've been podcasting for a while. So not only are you featuring stories, you know, on the side and you're highlighting different um you know, different resources and tools and things like that. But you're also pulling these stories specifically from these entrepreneurs and business owners who are going through these experiences of creating and launching businesses. So how were you able to just kind of, or how, how did you decide like, Hey, maybe let's, let's, let's do audio, you know, let's, let's go and, and launch a couple of podcasts. Like what inspired that? Yeah. I, and, and, I, and I really wish like a lot of what I end up doing was really organic. So I like to say, or like the, some people think that, Hey, you know, you, you had this master plan, but a lot of it was just me being organic. Um, so when I used to write those, um, articles about these business owners, I used to sit down just like a journalist and I would hit the record button on my phone or whatever, you know, I was using to record. And I found that after I wrote the post, I would go back and listen to, the the audio version i'm like hey this yeah. is a lot of really great content um so i i started to and you hear like in the ceo chat podcast those first podcasts are really just the recordings from these interviews um they're raw they're not you know fully uh edited or anything like that um i don't have my words together half the time <laughs> and i think a lot of it is what kind of propelled a lot of the things so Fast forward about two or three years, the the CEO chat podcast, I started to put an intro and outro there, started to make it a little bit more formalized, but it didn't reach, um, I guess, from a um, a system standpoint, the way that I wanted it to reach. Like I didn't, I had a a vision of having a daily podcast, but I didn't necessarily have the infrastructure set in order to do that. So that's really where the I am CEO podcast came from, where I have kind of set questions, but they're meant to they're they overlap and in, in hoping that it makes itself conversational right. and that's just kind of like the next step that i took from that standpoint it was like okay well i have a longer form podcast but how do i make this so people can listen really quickly get some really valuable information as you mentioned like hear their stories about people that are doing phenomenal things but at the same time be able to kind of put in their pocket these hacks and these nuggets and these things that can help us individually as business owners be better. And that's where the I'm CEO podcast came from and just like a laser focused daily podcast to, to really hopefully hit both of those exactly at the same time. Oh, wow. Yeah. And that's, uh, I love that you mentioned how you just, you, you progress, you know, you started with the CEO chat and then, you know, you fast forward a couple of years later and then you end up doing something a little bit more put together, you know, something more strategic, mm-hmm. which is the I am CEO. And, you know, a lot of people, they, you know, we need to hear that, you know, you just don't up and hit the ground running. It takes a little bit of work. And uh, of course we naturally progress, <clears throat> excuse me. So I think that's good. I love to hear that. Um, I want to, I, I, okay. So this is the good stuff. All right, y'all. So this is the meat of what I wanted to definitely have the discussion uh, with Gresh about is the the website the actual resource so ceo blog nation is not like we have the the articles and all that good stuff but it's actually an online community of blogs and business owners and things like that can we talk a little bit about you know what you what you're offering there you know it's you can go to the site and say okay hey this is just some information but it's really more of a community am i am i correct in saying that that's what i pick up when i go and just see all the content yeah, absolutely. That's really the goal of, you know, what we're trying to do is um, I have this equation that I go back to. And again, it didn't start where I, I said, okay, this is what exactly I wanted to happen and kind of organically happened from there. But it started out as a blog. Um, the first blog was actually called Herepreneur, Here and Entrepreneur, those two words together. Um, and then it, it came into CEO Blog Nation. And then I said, okay, people want to listen to or, or read more than blog posts. They want to listen to podcasts. They want to listen to video content. So it became kind of CB Nation. But at the heart of it, what I always use as an equation, which kind of enca- encapsulates everything that I tr- that we try to do is really 
uh, visibility plus resources times connections equals success. So the goal is that if you're listening to a blog or you're watching a video or you're reading an email interview or you're listening to a podcast, you're either going to hear a really phenomenal story or you're potentially going to get some resource or thing that you maybe didn't know about that's going to help you level up in your business. But at the heart of it, what we're trying to do is to build that connection around that content. So you're absolutely right where that's what we're still obviously working on, but that's the heart of what we're trying to do. Perfect. Yeah. And I know that there's a way that, you know, we can sign up for news, your newsletter. Um, is there like a specific membership or is that something that is just pretty much a free resource? Cause I know you got a, a variety of different things there. Yeah, absolutely. So it, it's a free, it's definitely a free resource. It's something I try to do for the business community. But um, one of the things we kind of touched on a little bit too was the digital marketing company that I have. So I basically try to have you know different ways by which we're able to generate revenue. One of them is the digital marketing um, that we provide. So everything you'll see is powered by Blue 16 Media, and that's all by design because that's the, the kind of like the digital marketing arm of everything um, that. Uh, we try to do, but also we have uh, kind of uh, affiliate links uh, within our site. So you also see like the CEO hacks and CEO hacks.co site has uh, a lot of those resources or in those hacks and those um, apps and books and things that you should check out to make you um, level up. And and then of course we, we try to have sponsored content as well across our sites. That's perfect. Yeah. And you gave me the best segue into talking about Blue 16 Media, uh, mm -hmm. because you know I'm going to pick your brain uh, in regards to digital marketing trends and the things that are happening now, you know, especially in, you know, today's climate where things have kind of turned to a different direction. And I think it's important for, you know, business owners and entrepreneurs, anybody really who's looking to promote, especially online. So let's let's talk a little bit about digital marketing. If you want to just maybe just give a drop of specifically some of the things that you guys offer, then we can kind of get into the specifics. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We, we, we provide pretty much web design and SEO. I always have this um, philosophy I talk about where I say you are a media company. Yeah. Um, and a lot of it is related to what I'm doing with CB Nation. But at the heart of it, what we try to do is basically set you up. So create that foundation through your website, your, your a lot of your digital marketing strategy, especially related to SEO, so that you're able to have that foundation in order to grow. Wow. And and I, I remember seeing that. Um, you know, turning companies into like turning entrepreneurs into media companies that's something along those lines. Like talk a little bit about why that's important, because a lot of times people feel like, OK, if I just get a couple of articles that will rank on SEO, then that's going to propel me at the top of, you know, uh, Google or whatever, you know, whatever they they feel is with the SEO. A lot of people feel like SEO is a one trick pony, like it's a one stop shop. So expand a little bit on what you're referring to when you speak of, you know, hey, we can turn our goal or what we're looking to do is turn you into a media company. Because to me, it sounds like, it's, hey, we're not just going to, you know, do this SEO article. It's more extensive than that. Basically, it's, it's more purposeful. Yeah, absolutely. You hit the nail on the head. And, and you know, it's it can get I think it's pretty uh, simple. I usually say on how exactly or, or what the the strategy is to do that. And, and I have it uh, kind of talked about as, you know, looking at your business, your organization, or even as an individual, like you are a media company. So if you really think of, um, I'm in the DC area, so like your own Washington uh, Post or potentially your USA Today, or if you like TMZ or whatever it is, your media of choice might be, it's really looking at um, that from like a journalistic perspective. And when you talked about that strategic part, that's really the whole entire focus of how you should conduct your digital marketing. You you don't necessarily pick everything. You pick one or two things, mm -hmm. but those yeah. things, things that you pick are going to be basically taking in mind your resources. So how much money or time do you have that you're going to spend on your digital marketing? It's really understanding who you're trying to target, um, painting that picture of exactly who um, that person or those persons are that you want to target. Um, is it the stay at home mom? Is it uh, potentially the, the the pro athlete? Is it person that wants to buy and sell real estate? Really drilling down and painting that picture, knowing their interests, things that they care about, things that they don't care about, what times of day they might hop onto a uh, social media or if they're searching on Google, what things are they searching for? And then the last kind of of those three questions that really provide that foundation is what does success look like? Mm -hmm. um, 
you mentioned like writing a blog post to rank well. Um, I, I usually you know, use this example all the time. Like a lot of times, unless you're a pizza place, it doesn't make sense for you to show up number one for pizza place and wherever you're located. If you're a pizza business, then that's great for you. But if you're not, then it's not just showing up. It's showing up for those things that are relevant to your target market. And I think a lot of times with a lot of these digital tools, people see that they should be doing this because it's new. Oh, I should be on TikTok because of this. I should be on Clubhouse because of that. Mm -hmm. But you really want to think backwards about who you're trying to target. And of course, there's always room to experiment and try out different things, but you want to know that, hey, that's my goal. I'm just trying to experiment, then that's completely fine. But if you're really trying to build something as a foundation that you're going to be able to attract those people um, that will potentially buy your products and services or support whatever cause you might have, whatever your goal might be, then you really want to think strategically about that. And those three questions are usually one of the, the best foundational tools to kind of start out with. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's some great information. I definitely thank you for sharing that. Um, I, I'm i curious to know, like, what what do you think are the most important tools? Maybe give me your top two to three for small businesses and entrepreneurs to be able to build that authentic connection with their social fo- following. You know, so, so you, just like you mentioned, you got a lot of people that are, you know, on all of these platforms. And maybe the target audience is not even on, you know, TikTok, you know, so like what are maybe two to three different resources or the best ways you feel would be for somebody that's trying to build that connection to. Yeah. Yeah. Give give me your thoughts on that. Yeah, I absolutely uh, appreciate that. And it's so funny, like during um, I always tell everybody to kind of visualize the part of the you are a media company is really visualize that you're making your favorite dish. I always say mine is my my mom's sweet potato pie. It's one of my favorite things. And a lot of times when you go to the grocery store, you want to get those ingredients that help you to make that like you don't want to grab ketchup. You're not grabbing mustard. And, you know, you don't want to at least don't put that in my sweet potato pie because the the (laughs) goal is really to figure out exactly what you're trying to do. So if you're like trying to connect with these entrepreneurs and business owners and you know that that's your target market, um, you have an idea of where they're spending time, then I, I'm a big believer in figuring out the those digital marketing ingredients related to that. So um, I believe SEO is a really big part, but it's more long term. So if you're trying to drive in um, clients tomorrow, SEO is probably not going to be the best way for you to do that. It's in terms of you building um, a strong foundation, you know, kind of in the future. But you also want to look into um, platforms like uh, LinkedIn, obviously, because that's more of a... Um, a professional kind of network and usually it's used yeah. more to, if there is a social media site that's used more uh, for by men it's linkedin uh, but you also want to drill down a little bit more and figure out like different ways that you can use linkedin are you going to use it as a group or you could potentially do ads are you going to create content on linkedin so there's different right. ways that yeah. you can kind of drill down from there um, but if you wanted to pick something that's a little bit more up and coming i'm a big android guy but i have an old iphone so i i'm on clubhouse uh, clubhouse is something that might be a great opportunity for you to connect and build relationships. And the reason that I say that, especially if you um, like to, um, you know, have conversations, um, you don't necessarily like video and things like that. Clubhouse is one of those that if you're a podcaster or something along those lines, it gives you that opportunity to, to collaborate and connect with people. And what you'll often find is that a lot of um, business and entrepreneurial people will be on platforms first. So because it's newer, because it's just on iOS, it allows that opportunity for you to find those business people maybe before the rest of the world gets there. Yeah. And I think that could be one of those things that you add into your your uh, your your digital marketing recipe so that you can build those connections and those relationships and kind of go from there. Yeah, no, that's perfect. And thank you for that explanation. It makes perfect sense. Um, all right. So before we get ready to wrap up, Gersh, let me, let me ask you, I got a very important question. I'd like to ask, like, what has been the most rewarding part of your entrepreneurial journey? That's a great question. Um, it's, it's really, really tough. Um, but I had, I started to do the I am CEO podcast. And one of the things that I wanted to do for the I am CEO podcast was I wanted to reach out to people, but I also wanted to connect with people that had been featured on the blog before. So I had somebody that was on my show and she told me 
um, that one of the questions we would ask, so we ask like weekly questions, we get about three questions where we ask, I call them roundups. We ask about 20 to 30, we'll get 20 to 30 responses that we'll publish of entrepreneurs about specific topics about like, why did you start your business? What advice would you give for other business owners? So different questions like that. So one of the questions we asked was, what does being a CEO mean to you? And I'll ask that on my podcast, but I, we asked that to people. And I didn't find out till years later, she said that she started her business largely because she she answered that question and we published her. Mm -hmm. And it really touched me because a lot of times the work that we do, we sometimes don't realize that we're making an impact or we're having any type of effect. And I think that's why it's so important to kind of, you know, stay true to who you are and just try to do the things that you're passionate about and things that you feel like are making an impact. But hearing from her and having her on my podcast where she said every time that she gives a presentation, she mentions, you know, that question and she's, you know, been featured. She's, you know, in Target and all of these places. She's, you know, doing phenomenal things in, in Florida and all across the world uh, with this business called No More Nausea. And that was something that really touched me tremendously because I wasn't doing it for that. But sometimes when you're you're grinding, you're doing your thing, you don't feel like you're you're making a dent or making an impact. Yeah. Sometimes hearing those stories or even knowing that puts everything in perspective and gives you the reason why you do what you do. So I think that's what comes to mind probably for me right now. Wow. Beautiful. Love that story. All right, Gresh. Words of encouragement for the listeners, aspiring business owners, entrepreneurs, anybody that needs to hear that word. Go ahead and drop a couple of words for, of encouragement for us. My uh, favorite quote is, uh, don't tell me the sky's the limit when their footprints on the moon. I think there's so many people that, you know, try to do uh, and try to tell people that something's not possible. But that's the quote that I always go back to. And I think that when you're reminded of those things and you're reminded that at one time, whatever we're working on now, we're doing now wasn't able or thought to be possible, it, it can be possible. So I would just say, just stay true to yourself and just, you know, build what you're building and do really phenomenal things. All right, y'all, ladies and gentlemen, we have heard from the wonderful Gresham Harkless. Gresh, my God, Gresh, I appreciate you dropping in. Before we close out, let us know where we can find you online, social media, website, services, all that good stuff. Absolutely. And my website that has links to kind of everything is IamGresh.com. That's I-A-M-G-R-E-S-H.com. It has links to Blue16Media.com, to the, the blog, to CBNation.co. Um, and Keisha, I truly appreciate you for giving me the opportunity to kind of be on the mic. I think you're doing phenomenal work. Love the podcast. Love all the work you're doing. And thanks for allowing me to be a part of it. Oh, thank you so much, Gresh. I appreciate your kind words. Look forward to having you back. You take care. You too. Thanks for hanging out with us here on SOB. We hope this episode has been resourceful. If you'd like to check out the latest articles or follow Keetra's website updates, just log on to Keetra.com or follow her on Twitter at K-E-E-T-R-I-A.